free speech. It's the thing everyone thinks they value until they hear something they don't like. And today, we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of the free speech battles happening on college campuses. Twenty seventeen was a big year for free speech. White nationalist rallies and the Take a Knee movement sparked tons of media attention and controversy. College campuses across the country, including where we are now and where I went to school, UC Berkeley, go Bears, are at the center of this free speech debate. It's the same story over and over again in the news. Protests erupt over a controversial speaker who comes to campus, sometimes shutting him down and sometimes resulting in violence. And this draws a divisive line between people who want to limit controversial speech at campuses and those who believe that anyone should have a right to speak freely, no matter how extreme their views. What exactly does free speech mean on college campuses? First, some background. Freedom of speech is protected under the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. It basically means the government cannot arrest or punish you for speaking your mind. You're totally free to bash whatever or whoever you want. The president, Congress, tech bros, decaf coffee, Florida. Anyway, the point is the government can't come after you for it. The founding fathers thought this was fundamental to democracy, and they were right. Without free speech, there couldn't have been the civil rights or women's rights to vote movements. And who knows, maybe our next president will be a woman. But to be clear, free speech just applies to government and government entities, which are places that are funded by your tax dollars at work, folks. And yes, public universities fall into this category. Private companies, on the other hand, can censor you all they want. That's why ESPN, for example, can fire a sports anchor for saying something that goes against their company policies. But that anchor can't get arrested for what she said. Or the NFL could make a rule banning players from kneeling, but players couldn't get arrested if they chose to do it. But there are some limits to free speech, like blackmail, making a threat, soliciting a crime, inciting violence, lying under oath, and violations of copyright are some of the things that are not allowed. And here's where a lot of the controversy on college campuses comes in, hate speech. Like this person who feels strongly that college campuses should be no place for hate. Racism isn't welcome, bigotry isn't welcome on this campus, and we can't set a precedent for giving people who are espousing hatred to have a platform on this campus. But the truth is, when it comes to giving speeches to crowds, for the most part, hate speech is protected. And just so we're all on the same page here, hate speech usually refers to attacks on people based on their race, religion, sexual orientation, gender disability, and the like. So, a speaker can totally say racist, homophobic, or mean-spirited things about groups of people. I mean, hey, that's pretty messed up, but it's also not illegal. It's super hard for someone to get punished for hate speech when speaking to a crowd. Basically, it can only happen if this speech immediately and intentionally provokes a crowd to commit a crime. So for example, a KKK leader is allowed to give a speech saying lots of terrible things about different races. But what would be illegal is if the speaker pointed to someone in the crowd and yelled, attack that person, and then the crowd actually did. Now it's super easy to hate hate speech. It's mean, offensive, and can really hurt the people it's directed at. But there's a good reason why it's protected. Think about it. Do you really want to put the power in the hands of the government to decide what they consider hateful? Say we've got a president that finds hilarious parody videos like these SNL clips to be hateful and decides to make them illegal. You know, I actually love football. I could have played. People say I remind them of an NFL player because I'm combative, I like to win, and I might have a degenerative brain disease. <laughs> oh my God, what happened? What happened was you made Barack Obama angry. And when you make Barack Obama angry, he turns into The Rock Obama. I mean, it wouldn't be America if we couldn't make fun of our own president. Okay, let's go back to college campuses for a second. Public universities, like where we are now, UC Berkeley, are public entities because they're funded by US tax dollars. So a public university can't deny any speakers based on their views, no matter how crazy or extreme they are. In fact, last year, Auburn University tried to get white nationalist Richard Spencer to stop speaking on campus, but a federal judge ruled that that was a violation of his constitutional First Amendment rights. But things get complicated when student or public safety is involved. Like when UC Berkeley had to dish out $600,000, yes, that's over half a million dollars, when conservative speaker Ben Shapiro wanted to come to campus. Could universities just use a threat of violence to shut down speakers whose views they don't agree with? And who should bear the cost? 
the universities, the speakers, or a combination of both? Free speech advocates believe a university must do everything in its power to allow and protect speakers. One of the most outspoken advocates is Robert Reich, an economist and professor at Berkeley who's known for his liberal views. We see him all the time on the news advocating for free speech for some of the people he disagrees with the most. I tell my students all the time the best way to learn something is to talk to people who disagree with you because that forces, uh, that forces you to sharpen your views and test your views and you might even, uh, might even come out in a different place. A, a university of all places is the, is the, is the is locus where we want to have provocative views. And do you really want administrators deciding who's offensive? I mean, where do you draw the line on hateful speech? If a liberal campus decides to ban Spencer, could a conservative campus decide to ban Colin Kaepernick or Hillary Clinton? Censorship goes both ways. So what do you think about all this? How should universities handle controversial speakers? Let us know in the comments below and thanks for watching! Oh, and if you like this video, be sure to check out our other one on how the immigration system really works. And don't forget to subscribe.